Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. I'm Minister Cedric Harden and I'll be presenting our lesson today for August the 22nd, 2021. We're still in Unit 3 entitled, Faith Gives Us Hope. And our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is entitled, Perfect Love. Our devotion reading is taken from the Gospel according to John, Chapter 14, uh, verses 15 through 24. Uh, background scripture is taken from the first epistle of John, chapters 4 and 5. And we'll be studying today from uh, the first epistle of John, chapter 4, verses 2 and 3, uh, verses 13 through 17, and also chapter 5, uh, verses 4 and 5. Our key verse reads, God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in them. That's taken from uh, 1 John chapter 4, uh, verse 16b from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to remember the love God described by the writer of 1 John. Secondly, to reflect on the various expressions of God's love in our lives. And then thirdly, to respond to the challenge to love others with Christ-like love. We have three outlines today that will be a part of our lesson. Uh, the first outline is entitled, Beware or Be Aware of Others. Our uh, second outline is entitled, Be Aware of Ourself. And then the third outline is entitled, Be Aware of Our Savior. We certainly thank and praise God for yet another day that God has blessed us to be in the land of the living. God has blessed us to uh, continue to share his word with you. God has blessed us to continue in the faith. And, and we certainly are praying for uh, this country. We're certainly praying for each and every family. Certainly are praying for all of those on the front lines of this pandemic. And we encourage you now to uh, get your Bible and uh, prepare yourself to take some notes. We have quite a bit of ground to cover today. and We want to be able to uh, walk away from this lesson with an understanding of perfect love, the type of uh, love that God uh, prescribes uh, for us and to us based on the uh, love that uh, he has demonstrated. Uh, that agape love uh, to, in, to entreat with kind affection, compassion, or goodwill uh, is what that means. But we want to understand that we want to be able to love God and uh, uh, as he has loved us. Um, and we have experienced his love and we certainly want to be able to love others uh, unconditionally. But we want to get into uh, the book of 1 John. Uh, this is a lesson I believe that we uh, so desperately need. Uh, and just to uh, point um, at the occasion uh, of the writing of the book of 1 John. But it was written um, to warn and instruct the readers about a kind of false teaching. Uh, that denied Jesus Christ had come in the flesh. Uh, the teaching was that Christ only appeared to be human uh, so that there was no real incarnation and no divine Savior who was able to die for sinners. Uh, Christ only seemed to die. Such teaching is known from early Christian history and is called Docetism. Uh, from the Greek uh, dokeo, uh, that word simply means to seem, right? And so um, some scholars think that the false teaching was a variety of Gnosticism, uh, a religious movement that uh, connected salvation with an experience of, uh, of an individual, uh, esoteric. Uh, revelation, if you will, 
Uh, and so we want to be able to understand as we get into these outlines uh, uh, the importance of John's writing. Uh, and as we said, he was trying to warn uh, his readers. But uh, 1 John uh, chapter 4, verse 13, it bridges the messages of 1 John and the gospel according to John. So uh, in the fourth gospel, Jesus spoke of the Holy Spirit or advocate who would come to maintain continuity and intimacy of relationship between the disciples and their master. You can see that and uh, the gospel according to John chapter 14 verses 15 through 21 uh, the gospel of John chapter 15 uh, verse 26 and 27 and also uh, John chapter 16 verses 5 through 15 uh, but first John uh, chapter 4 verse 13 and 14 is one of the rare places in scripture where the Father, Son, and Spirit are each mentioned as distinct persons of the Godhead in mutual relationship with us and with one another. So they work together as to perfect our love and to uh, build a faith that is completely ready to serve God. And we want to keep that in mind so as we we get into this language uh, uh, what John is saying here um, we can appreciate the uh, uh, how critical it was for us to understand and his readers for under to understand how they were connected to the body and, and, and how they were to exemplify the characteristics of Christ and I'm glad that John lifted the Trinity, uh, the Godhead in his writing, uh, so all of us can understand that we are unable to do uh, the will of God in and of ourselves. We do not have the capacity to love one another uh, 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 the way God wants us to uh, love one another without God being involved. And I hope that will make sense to you as we go along in this lesson. But our first outline uh, taken from uh, uh, the first epistle of John chapter 4 uh, is verses 2 and 3 but I want to back up and read verse 1 just to put all of this in context as we talk about uh, be aware of others uh, so let's read the first epistle of John chapter 4 and we're going to do verse 1 verse 2 and verse 3 the Bible says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Verse 2, By this you know the Spirit of God. Uh, it goes on to say, Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Verse 3, and every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. So when we think about uh, being aware of other people, other doctrines, uh, as we read, uh, the occasion uh, for John's writing, uh, the threat, if you will, uh, this type of heresy uh, to uh, the Christian believer uh, was a reality then in John's day, and it is a reality now. Uh, and so we have to be mindful, uh, 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 we have to be aware, we have to have uh, uh, that kind of discernment, and we're going to talk about that a little bit, because uh, this is where the Holy Spirit can help us uh, in, in terms of discerning who we are listening to, not because of who they are, not because of the credentials they hold, not because of uh, 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 the, the titles that they may ascribe to, but based on their testimony, John is saying here, be, you should be able to, or the reader should be able to listen, uh, to be able to recognize or discern the Spirit of God, or if it 
it, if it's another spirit at work, right? So he goes on to say every spirit, every person that is preaching the gospel or preaching a message uh, 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 to us, we need to fact check, if you will, uh, the origin or the infusion or the unctioning of that teaching. And, and so we don't uh, get trapped and uh, tricked, if you will, into following things that are not biblically based. And so these, these false teachers in John's day was teaching that Christ didn't come in the flesh. And that, that, that's something that we are going to uh, uh, lift so we can understand the relevance. If, if Christ didn't come in the flesh, right, that would be a, a significant shift from what we have been taught. That would be a, 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 a departure of the norms uh, uh, of the doctrinal uh, things that we have been taught. So uh, uh, as we think about the incarnation of Christ and we, we, and we, we think about the Old Testament, uh, it, 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 it talks about why uh, uh, was Jesus having had a real physical body important, right? So uh, uh, until the destruction of the temple in A.D. 70, uh, uh, animals were sacrificed yearly uh, on the Day of Atonement to remind the Jews that the shedding of blood was necessary to atone for their sins. You can see that in Leviticus chapter 16, and also uh, you can compare that with Hebrews chapter 9, uh, verse 22. So those sacrifices pointed to the sacrifice that Jesus would one day offer as he gave himself on the cross. You can see that in Matthew uh, 26, verse 28. So if Jesus did not come in the flesh, then he didn't have a body to sacrifice or blood to shed, right? So thus it was essential uh, that Christ or that Jesus uh, uh, be not only fully God, but also uh, fully human in order to make salvation possible. And you can see that uh, uh, in First Timothy uh, uh, chapter 3, verse 16. So, so thus John provides a method by which to identify false prophets in this regard. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ had come in the flesh is of God, right? Would be in line with the sacrifice uh, that, that Christ needed to provide for our salvation. So this, this test complements Jesus' own words in Matthew. Uh, I want you to look at Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 through 17, and also uh, uh, Matthew chapter 24, verses 23 through 26. Uh, regarding the the need to identify false prophets, so people that are talking about uh, uh, Christ not coming in the flesh, uh, uh, they nullify the sacrifice right that is needed uh, for men to be saved. So uh, 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 without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Right. So we need this. Uh, a sacrifice that Christ brought to us. So these uh, uh, false teachers uh, uh, were not identifying with Scripture. And we have to be careful with people who have a problem with the name of Jesus and all that it means to us today. But I was looking a little bit further uh, 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 to, to just dig a little deeper into this uh, in our current age of, of prosperity preaching. Uh, many people are seeking uh, a prophecy preaching profitable future telling right as opposed to prophetic preaching the proclamation of what thus said the Lord that's the distinction so it's not what I say and, and so uh, one of the things that I love to do uh, uh, in, in my uh, uh, reference to commentary and even my teaching and preaching I love to refer the readers, the hearers, back to the Word of God. Uh, sometimes I don't use commentary. It doesn't mean it's not applicable, but sometimes I don't use it uh, uh, if it if it strays too far away 
from the Word of God. I hope that makes sense because it, it's not my language or my commentary that will save you. It is thus says the Lord, right? Whatever the Lord has said, and we need to, as preachers of God, we always have to give reverence to God uh, 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 for what we are sharing with God's people so we can lead people to Christ, right? Uh, 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 I, it's okay to follow me, but follow me as I follow Christ, if that makes sense. And so uh, these uh, uh, false teachers and false prophets in John's day uh, were merely seeking uh, to be glorified, if you will, to seeking they were seeking uh, uh, their own methods, their own selfish gain, uh, not reverencing Christ and then straying away from the doctrinal norms. And John is warning these readers, be careful of other people. Be care careful of other messages. Uh, when, when I began this lesson with you today, I asked you to get your Bible, right? This is where we are going. Uh, 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 take some notes. Be be able to take down down these things that I'm sharing with you, and certainly the scriptures. And you do your own homework, uh, uh, so you can uh, uh, be able to identify with who is unctioning me to speak to you. Right? Who who is infusing me? What what is the the the, the substance? Of, of the message or the teaching that I'm sharing with you today. So this was the problem, right? So, uh, uh, but people, uh, as we shared with you there, seeking a kind of message, right? Uh, uh, something that tickles their ear, something that tells them uh, uh, of all of the things that they will uh, uh, possess. Uh, nothing spiritual, no content, no substance uh, 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 to your soul. Uh, and to the things that Christ did at Calvary. Uh, uh, and we have to identify with that if we're going to be saved. Romans chapter 10 uh, tells that clearly that we have to identify with this message, right? So, uh, but these uh, uh, false uh, teachers, uh, they were on the rise in John's day. Uh, and they are becoming harder and harder to identify. And that's something that I underlined and highlighted in my study because uh, many of us, uh, truth be told, we struggle in the area of discernment. Uh, we struggle in the area of knowing the substance of, of what we're being told. And this is something that we have to uh, uh, pray about. It doesn't mean that uh, 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 the preachers are not good or not saying what thus says the Lord, but we have to understand that our soul is at stake, right? And so we have to make sure that uh, whatever these individuals are telling us, it is of the Word of God and we can see that for ourselves, right? And so uh, uh, the discernment uh, was an issue in John's day, so John is, is telling his readers how to test, right? How to go about this. So listen to what they have to say. Uh, 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 listen carefully to see who they are identifying with. Uh, uh, and then sometimes uh, uh, some of them have been, some of these false teachers and preachers have been able to mingle a little gospel in uh, to their own craftiness and, and sometimes it causes us to stray. I'm taking a little bit more time with you today in this first outline because I think this is critical, right? Beware, be mindful, right? So it is the backdrop uh, that approximately 2,000 years ago, John uh, penned the text that we read today. He seriously takes the task to heart to warn the believers to not believe everything they hear for there are many false prophets in the world right that's very clear and what has happened in every culture and certainly in ours uh, they're growing right there are many so-called movements and missions and uh, uh, ministries and all of these things and, and some some of them uh, uh, even in John's day uh, uh, they had merged together against Christianity and we still see that today and so we have to be careful right so I want you to take a very hard look at this 
the first epistle of John chapter 4 and and uh, 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 certainly examine all the scriptures that uh, that we gave you but the question is asked in what ways can we be aware of false teachers and I, I hope I made that clear enough to you today that there's a strategy that we need to have and it's all biblical right and we certainly need to be praying and asking God to grant to us if we do not have the uh, 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 spirit of discernment that God was grant would grant that I also want you to add 1st Corinthians chapter 12 uh, uh, to your study because uh, we can see there that those are gifts that God gives uh, to be able to know the difference right and if you don't know then you should ask your trusted leaders this is what your pastors are for this is what your leaders are for right and you certainly need to be in prayer about these things all right let's move on the second outline is entitled be aware of ourself right this is taken from first John chapter 4 uh, verses 13 uh, through 17 and I want to read this from the NIV translation John says here in verse 13 this is how we know that we live in him and he in us he has given us of his spirit and we have seen and testified that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world Verse 15, if anyone acknowledges that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love, right? Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how, this is verse 17, this is how love is made complete uh, uh, among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment in this world we are like Christ so a lot to unpack here but uh, one of the things that I want to be able to lift from this uh, particular outline is what you have what you have been given uh, this promise goes back to Acts right uh, Jesus uh, before his ascension he was talking to his disciples about praying uh, for them and asking the uh, the Father to uh, give them the promise, the promise of the Holy Spirit. This is your keeper, right? This is your strengthener. This is your ally. This is your advocate. This is this part of the Godhead is on standby, right? So uh, we don't have to say anymore. Something told me, right? We can we can put a name on on who this. Uh, uh, individual is who is speaking to us you're not crazy because you hear the Spirit of God's voice uh, in your hearing your hearing has been circumcised in a way it has been a uh, 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 blessed in a way so you 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 could you could be able to hear uh, the Spirit of God uh, Jesus said my sheep know my voice right uh, and a stranger they will not follow so over the course of your relationship with God you will be taught the voice of the Holy Spirit you will know the Spirit of God you will be convicted by that and this is what John is saying here in verse 13 this is how we know right so the Holy Spirit is your witness that you are a child of God I believe Romans chapter 8 will break that down a little bit more for you to help you to understand and this is the position in the body of Christ of all believers that we need to be drawing from right so you are not alone according to the uh, upper room discourse that Jesus uh, had with his disciples uh, John chapter 14 uh, through 16 uh, Jesus talked to them specifically uh, uh, in chapter 16 of the Gospel of John about the role of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and, and one of his jobs, the Holy Spirit's role, is to convict, right? To bring to the reality uh, in you uh, who you are and who he is. And that should give you confidence that you are a child of God right and so it's very clear knowing ourselves and our position in Christ uh, helps us to be aware of many schemes or ungodly manipulation uh, of, of Satan and anyone else utilizing ungodly taxi tactics 
to distract and to keep us off course. So the Holy Spirit will talk to you. He will talk to me. He will warn you, right? Uh, 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 he will enlighten you, and we need to pay attention to that, and you need to expect that because of your position and draw from this, right? Uh, that's very important because we're going to need to use the Holy Spirit when we get to the part about loving one another. This is the same advocate that we need to get over the hump in terms of uh, uh, forgiving one another and letting things go and being able to deal with people even though we have been wronged. Remember Jesus at the cross praying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. This is the kind of love that we have to have toward one another. We have to pray for individuals uh, 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 because we understand they are not acting in, in accord with the word of God. Uh, and I mean, in reality, what believers should be attacking another believer, right? That doesn't make biblical sense. We are brothers and sisters in Christ, and we have been uh, uh, admonished to warn one another. So if, it, if it's coming, these negative activities, it's coming for, from someone uh, who is outside the word of God, who may not be saved, who may not uh, be conditioned, right, uh, through the word of God and certainly through the spirit of God to do the things that are pleasing in God's sight. But you have this gift. I have this gift. And so we need to be aware that this gift, as John says, if anyone acknowledges that Jesus Christ is the son of God, God lives there in that individual and they in God. So this is all connected. Uh, uh, and I believe in the Gospel of John chapter 14, uh, Jesus talked about this with his disciples that when as a believer that this Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit would come and make their abode with that particular believer. So just think about this in broad terms that you have the Spirit of God, the entire Godhead in you right you have been transformed to understand this and and so what i like about this john says this is how we know this is what brings us confidence that we are children of god i also want you to look at ephesians chapter 1 and its entirety and it will break down what you have as a believer right and how you receive that based on your acceptance of the word of god but i kept looking at this uh, love and the indwelling presence of God, right? The Holy Spirit who indwells each believer imparts knowledge uh, of God's presence and, uh, and of our union with him. And again, I shared with you that's in John 15, chapter 15, verses 1 through 10, right? So as a result, watch this, the Spirit enables us to testify of Christ saviorhood so as i gave you a uh, 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 first corinthians chapter 12 and when you get over there you will see that no man can say that jesus is lord but by the holy spirit so this is how we are able to testify that jesus is the christ that he is the son of god and, and that he is our savior because that infused a, a, a part about your testimony is coming from the Holy Spirit, right? And so, and as you are testifying and you are hearing this come out of you, you should understand and know uh, uh, that you are a child of God, right? And that you have been sealed unto the day of redemption. And the only reason why you are saying these things about Christ is because you have believed in God. You have believed the message that God could, gave concerning his son. You have accepted right you have confessed with your mouth and you have believed in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you got saved and as a result of that transaction that supernatural event the Holy Spirit came up on you I'm just explaining the process so we should not be surprised that there is a, 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 a Godhead living in us and unctioning us to testify, to sing, to give glory and honor back to the one who gave, which is God. Does that make sense? I hope it does. But it goes on to talk about here 
confession of Christ's deity uh, uh, implying also surrender to him establishes union with God. So those who respond to God's love find that love becomes a working force in their lives bringing the attendant blessings of fellowship with him and his abiding presence in that particular believer. One of the things that I loved about this uh, studying of uh, the first epistle of John uh, and, and what I found out it essentially sets forth fellowship of father and children right fellowship uh, you and I have this now with God through Jesus Christ and so the Holy Spirit is a part of that package that allows us to go beyond how we used to be when we didn't forgive and how we wouldn't let it go and how we found that we would never love an individual that did us wrong now we find ourselves or we should find ourselves forgiving that individual and praying for that individual just like Jesus said uh, preached uh, uh, the Sermon on the Mount that's in Matthew chapters 5 through 7 right and so we are able to do these things now uh, 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 and, 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 and then we are able to uh, be assured of the fact that it must be the handiwork of God that allows us to love God the way uh, uh, he prescribes in his word with all of our heart right all of our soul all of our strength and then we are commanded we are not suggested to love one another we are commanded that's a difference right and so without question you must as a child of God you must forgive those who have done you wrong right uh, you must pray for those individuals who have uh, done you wrong you must pray for those individuals who have lied on you that's our job right as believers right and so one of the things that I like to do and share with others when I know my enemy's name I call their name out before God I pray for them and I don't ask God to terminate their lives I ask God to save them right because we should not be harming deceiving harming hurting one another we see enough of that in society today because what's missing is the love of God in them so they can uh, 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 reproduce if you will right what they are and who they are this is all tied to the Great Commission we're supposed to teach those things that we have been taught by the Holy Spirit right which is to love God and love our fellow man but as John uh, uh, lifts here again I want to highlight this again knowing ourselves right what do you know about yourself what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses and what are you doing about those weaknesses that cause you not to be able to do what God is commanding I want to emphasize that what God is commanding us to do so let's get rid of this I don't like her I don't I'm not praying for her because she did me wrong I'm not speaking to him anymore we need to get rid of those things because uh, 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 God expects us to be better the theme if you will of, of uh, uh, Jesus sermon on the mount back over in Matthew chapter 5 at verse 20 I want you to look at that at your leisure right Matthew chapter 5 verse 20 and Jesus says something like unless your righteousness exceeds right exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees you will in no wise enter the kingdom of God so we cannot go on and create a normal uh, a situation for us not loving one another that is not normal for a believer we should not call that normal or continue living in that kind of atmosphere where we don't love one another right that we don't pray for one another we have to do it it is our job I hope we understand that that is what we have been called on to do right and so as John lives here in verse 16 as we read and so we know and we and and we rely on the love of God 
right? What if God treated us the way we treated one another? And he chose not to wake you up because he was mad at you, right? Because he chose, he didn't want to forgive you because of something you did. And he didn't want to let it go. You know, we would, we would be in a horrible shape if God conducted himself as we do, right? If he just killed us for no reason without giving us a chance. Right? What equity would we find in that? Right? Would that be justified? So we expect God to wake us up, and sometimes we we are uh, uh, we we miss the opportunity. I'll say this politely: we miss the opportunity to acknowledge God, even on the things that we want to do tomorrow or the next minute. We just assume. We're going to have life, health, strength, resources, and everything that we need to do those, those things that we desire to do. Many times we miss the opportunity to say, if it's the Lord's will, right? We need to give that back to God because he doesn't owe us. I believe Romans chapter 11 will help us to understand that God does not owe us anything, right? We have not given anything to God that he should pay us back. So we are indebted to God, right? We owe him everything and we are relying on him to love us every day, right? We rely on him to wake us up early. We rely on him for our health and strength. We are praying to God about everything, right? We want God to heal, to save, to deliver, to set free, and the list goes on and on. But yet we want to hate one another and we think God is going to give us a pass? Absolutely not. So we are required to do these things. All right, what can I do to be better prepared for worship and to help lead and engage others in worship? That's a good question. All right, so I, I just again want to emphasize the importance of prayer. And I'll, I'll give you an old term that I grew up hearing, uh, and I had to learn to understand what this means, but following the dictation of the Holy Spirit. What are we being unctioned to do, right? Worship is a very uh, sacred part of who we are, but we need God to be able to perform that worship, right? You can't, quote unquote, have church without spirit, right? You can't have church, if you will, without the Spirit of God because He unctions us to sing. He unctions us to move, to shout, to speak. Everything about that worship experience is utterly dependent on God. He doesn't need our script, right? He's a, he doesn't need us to tell Him what time he should come into the sanctuary. We brought him in when we came. And if we follow the dictation of the Holy Spirit, our worship, our worshipful experience would be more pleasing to God because it came from him. Right? We need to rely on God when we want to pray, or even when we want to pray. Right? I do this religiously with, with God. I ask him to guide me in worship for prayer. Romans chapter 8 clearly says we don't know how to pray as we are. But it gives reference to the spirit interceding on behalf of the saints. We don't know what the will of God is. So we need, we need God's help to guide that prayer into the will of God. Otherwise we're just, we're just praying amiss. Right? So this is very important that John is lifting these things. So remember that. Be aware of other people. Be aware of yourself. Third outline is entitled, Be Aware of Our Savior. 1 John chapter 5, uh, verse 4 and 5. And again, I want to read this from the um, NIV translation. The Bible says, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Right? 
when I was looking at this and this distinction about the world, I want to give you this because I found this in this study that as we consider this in today's study, we must be careful to distinguish among three ways the Bible speaks of the world, right? So, first of all, the world, the, the Bible speaks of the world as a planet, right? Planet Earth in, it, in its uh, physical sense, right? You can look at Acts chapter 17, verses, uh, verse 24, and also Romans chapter 10, verse 18. Second example would be uh, the Bible talks about the world's human or as the world's human inhabitants. Like uh, we can see some examples in Luke chapter 2 verse 1, John chapter 3 verse 16, right? So this in this context, uh, uh, we're talking about the world and the its human inhabitants, right? That's what John is talking about in this third outline. The third example is as a system of values opposed to God's, right? So these examples for that type of uh, 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 distinction of the world is in John chapter 14 verse 17. These are just example scriptures. There are more. If you do your homework, you'll be able to lift those. And also Colossians chapter 2 uh, verse 20. But we're talking about the inhabitants of the world. So who has the victory over the world, right? Who has the victory over uh, uh, the cares of this world, the things that uh, you, you all know what we used to do and all of that. Now you have power from that same Holy Spirit we were talking about in the second outline to sustain you. Keep in mind uh, one of the roles of the Holy Spirit. He is a sustainer. He is a keeper. Right? He is an advocate. And so he is the one that's keeping you from going backward. He is the one that is keeping you from falling. He is the one that's keeping you from going completely off the rails. He is keeping you sober in your thinking, right? He is keeping you holy, right? He is constantly cleansing us from unrighteousness. This is a day by day. We die day by day. That old nature is becoming each and every day more and more like Christ, right? The first epistle of John. Uh, chapter 3 should help us to understand this. Paul talked about uh, this, this uh, uh, he that began a good work in Philippians, I believe chapter 1 verse 6, right? So back to this Holy Spirit, he has given us power and this is, this is the victory, right? We have been given the gift to believe. You didn't just come up with that, right? That is a gift from God. I remember when I didn't believe, right? But over the course of time, through God's work, through the power of the Holy Spirit, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe He is my Savior. This is not, I can't take the credit for that, right? And so I thank God for overcoming the things and the people and the environments that, that had us on that destructive path, right? That if if God hadn't stepped in, you know, we we say that all the time. If it had not been for the Lord, if it had not been for the grace of God, there's no telling where you and I would be. And quite frankly, I don't want to know, right? Because God gave us the ability to believe. He saved us. He gets all of the glory for that. Right, so, so John says here, who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. You know, the Old Testament type gives us a clear path of Israel. Uh, I'll share this with you and we'll move on and we'll be done. We'll say our prayers and we'll uh, leave you uh to share these things with your family and your friends and look at them that you might be edified. But Israel's example, right, prior to entering the promised land, they were given clear instructions by God to be an example to the world, right? So when the world sees that we overcome, 
that we have overcome, that the things that we used to do, we don't do those things anymore. And somebody comes running and asking you what must they do to be saved. You need to have a clear answer for them. You need to believe on the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We need to be able to guide them biblically. Don't give them what you think. Don't give them uh, something that you thought. Give them what thus says the Lord. This is what these false prophets were not doing. Right? And so we want to be careful about this lesson today. We want to be mindful. We thank God for it. Uh, and so we want to be able to uh, eat this in a way and digest this in a way that we might be the better for it and by all means do something to help someone else come to know Jesus and the pardon of their sins. Our closing prayer, Lord help us to be more mindful of opportunities to show love and kindness to others. Remind us that through your power we can overcome the world including the weight of hurts, guilt, or temptation. Guide us as we seek to serve you so that your glory may be revealed in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Just know that we love you and that we continue uh, to keep praying for one another. Don't forget to pray for me. I won't get, forget to pray for you. We need one another's prayer. Prayer makes us strong when we, when we are weak. It builds us up where we have been torn down. Pray for me and I'll pray for you that the same God that, that started this in our lives will keep us in these perilous times. God bless you. And until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again.